I ran an intercooler kit with a built in header tank for a Cummins lump straight off the bench. A Mark II Golf with a 20 valve in. This is a Mark I, Mark II Cortina petrol tank. Uh, 40 mil core RS 500 Sierra Cosworth. Mark II, Mark I Escort. Your head is full of dreams. Tears are a proof of failure. You just gotta let them flow without judge. There's so many ways to be happy. You can do whatever you like. You don't have to be ready. You just gotta try. Hi there guys, welcome to another episode. I uh, asked on one of the Facebook groups a few weeks ago, um, where was the best place to get a radiator for a Mark 1 Fiesta Z-Tech conversion? Uh, I got a few replies, but all of them said exactly the same person. The Conan Ray is the guy that owns and runs Creative Aluminium Fabrication. Uh, it's a place just outside Birmingham. Um, I've had a chat to him on online, and um, basically he's made me one ready. So all I need to do now is go and pick it up. Um, we'll have a look around his workshop, where he is. Uh, have a quick chat to him about all the stuff that he's got there. And then we are going to enjoy the rest of the Christmas here in England with the family. Then I have to just put the radiator in the suitcase and we'll fly it back to Sweden. When I get back to Sweden... I'll be able to fit it to the car and start to plumb it in. Um, so right now, we're going off for a bit of a road trip across to Birmingham, um, and we're gonna meet Colin. Right, this is Colin and he owns Creative here. Um, so I've popped down here to have a look at the work he's done and to pick my radiator up. Um, so we're gonna have a look, quick look around at some of the radiators that Colin's got lying around and uh, he can talk us through them. Right, this is a, a Radden intercooler kit with built-in header tank for a Cummins lump going into a Land Rover. Uh, high spec, big boost intercooler, holds 80 PSI as we've found out. This is uh, straight off the bench, a Mark II Golf with a 20 valve in. This yeah, something is a bit different. Slightly unfinished, needs a new filler pipe. This is a Mark I, Mark II Cortina petrol tank. Uh, yeah, it is what it is, popular item. I love it with all the... the yeah, well, it's, I try, when Beautiful. you build, you try and match to what you see. Yeah. As best you can in a fabricated form. Beautiful. But it's still, because it's not moulded here, it's more of a race tank. Right. But for the purist, if you can't get one, or you're not prepared to pay what it costs to get one, it's a good replacement, paint it black, and nobody ever sees it unless you get run over. Uh, 40 mil core RS500 Sierra Cosworth. And that, this one's black. been powder coated in the black, yeah. The double fan on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you can go you can go deeper, but for a standard car, you don't need any more than a forty, really. No. Like I said, that that last one I did the intercooler for, still only got a forty mil rad on. I've done them twice as fat as that for proper race cars. What's this one for? Then? Mark two, Mark one Escort, uh, uncut panel, ZTEC. With a Sandy unit. With a Sandy on you on the bottom as well there. Yeah. Powder coated in black again. Fan on the front. Fan on the front. Beautiful looking. I, I like that when the light went across it just then. You can see that it's black. Oh, it's proper black, not like most powder coaters. Thank you so much to Colin for showing me around the workshop there. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm really, really impressed by the stuff that he does. I'll leave his links down below. Um, get in touch with him if you want a radiator, intercooler, you name it. I'm sure he can build it. He's amazing with the TIG welder. Um, I'm going to get the family back in the car now. We're going to go off and do some shopping. We'll have a bit of a Christmas in England, and then we'll fly back to Sweden. Right, we're back in Sweden and in the workshop, and I've got the new radiator here next to the original radiator. So you can see in comparison that the new radiator is slightly thicker. Um, there is these pipes have been moved around and that's basically to fit the ZTEC engine on it. Um, the same on this side, the pipes have been moved around. That's again, just to fit the ZTEC engine on it. Uh, the radiator itself is very, very slightly bigger than the original one, um, height wise. Thickness, obviously it's thicker, but it's got to take a lot more cooling power than the little 1.1 engine there compared to the ZTEC one. Um, I just have to show these welds, they are amazing. He does an absolutely beautiful job, Colin. Just have to look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then on this side, such a neat, beautiful job. Really do like that. I've gone ahead and drilled the holes for it already, so these now match the original holes in the radiator. Uh, this radiator is slightly bigger. Right, so I've got the two radiators sat on each other. Um, and as you can see, I've lined the top bolts up there. But Colin's radiator is ever so slightly longer than the original one. So basically all I need to get is a piece of aluminium that just extends that little tiny amount there. It's only what? It's only about five or six centimetres, but just a piece of aluminium that means I can bolt the uh, new radiator into the original holes of the car and I don't need to drill any extra holes and it's the same on that side. So now I can get this radiator fitted to the car and we can have a look what it looks like in its final place. Okay so that's the radiator in place where it should be. Um, I did try to start with by putting it on the original bolt holes there and just having a hole in there. Uh, the problem with that was there this is the water pump and I've not adapted it. I know a lot of people do buy ones that are pre-bent in that direction, I think. Um, I've not done that uh, and I didn't really want to do it either. Um, so basically it meant that this pipe, when the radiator is sitting at the right level now, as you can see, they're pretty level. So all I need now is a piece of hose and I'll be able to join that pipe up quite nicely. Um, so I've made some brackets here just to lower it down a little bit. I do have the option to raise that very, very slightly if I need to. Um, anything that could cause a problem is going to be the front here, because what you can see is there's only about half the radiator showing. Um, there's a little bit of air at the top there, so I could lift it up. I won't get much more cooling on it. I'll probably get about that much more cooling if I lift it up that gap that I've brought it down, but I don't think that's going to make much difference to be quite honest. Um, so basically I'm going to leave it like that, I'm going to test it and see what happens. Uh, I do like the look of the radiator in there. I like the fact now that moving it over like that has brought it slightly more central in the hole, before it was a bit too far over in that direction. Uh, now I quite like it, it's a lot more central. So yeah, once the grill's on there you won't see it. Um, I was contemplating powder coating it, the radiator, so that it was black, so you didn't see it and it didn't stick out. But once the grill's on there, I don't think you'll see it. 
I don't think it's going to be a problem because um, I want to keep the sleeper look I don't want it to stick out that this has got some weird engine in it uh, I want it to look like it's a Mark 1 1.1 Fiesta until you open the bonnet and you see that engine and you see that radiator and all the rest of it that's in there so at the moment I'm going to keep it like that once I get driving around uh, get the engine up to temperature I'll be able to see if there's enough air getting cooled in that or not if there isn't well I'll have to just change my plans um, but at the moment that's what I'm going to go with so the only thing left to do on this now is to get a 90 degree bend here and another 90 degree bend to go into the thermostat housing and that is pretty much everything done I will obviously because this is loose at the moment it's only held on with the top two uh, I'll probably make a bracket that goes down to there and then I can put a riv nut in that hole there and uh, be able to bolt it straight to that I think that'll be like a little L bracket there going straight nicely down to there just to hold it straight there are there's another hole there and I think there's another one behind that wiring loom as well so I'll be able to use those holes and put pop nuts in there and that should be all right right I'm gonna leave that video there uh, I need to get some hoses a um, little bit of pipe for the two 90 degree joints but other than that I'm quite happy with where it's gone the welds on it are beautiful looking um, it's just a nice little radiator to look at to be quite honest um, so I'm quite happy with that I will put a link below to um, creative aluminium fabrications homepage Instagram page um, I recommend Colin get in touch with him if you want a radiator for your car doesn't have to be a mark 1 ZTEC he does pretty much anything so contact him with any of your queries any of the projects that you're doing and I'm sure he'll be able to make something up for you um, so I just want to say a big thanks to Colin for showing me around his workshop, taking the time over Christmas to let me come into his workshop, pick the radiator up, uh, have a quick chat to him. Um, so yeah, really nice guy, fantastic work, uh, highly recommended. So if you like what we've seen in this episode, press that subscribe button, press the bell. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot and bye bye.